But Governor Gretchen Whitmer and I are excited about the state of Michigan and what we can do for the next four years. And that always is grounded in what's happening in Detroit. Uh, this, this city is, you know, the most important city for our economy, for our culture, and helps to really set the trajectory for our future. And so thinking about downtown Detroit is very personal to me in, in the, my childhood, um, spent the first half of my childhood living just east of downtown um, in Elmwood Park. And my father worked downtown, so I remember coming in with him uh, so often, going to the Grand Prix downtown, super excited to have that going back through the streets of downtown Detroit. Remember going to Trapper's Alley and thinking riding a people mover was the most awesome thing ever to go get off of Trapper's <laughs> it's Alley. It's an amusement park ride for kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I, I think how things have evolved, what's become clear is that it's important that every part of our city can advance together. And you can't think of an amazing city, an amazing city of experience, without having an amazing downtown experience. And that experience must then be able to create value for others who live in other parts of the city. And I think we're beginning to really see elements of that take shape. And so the state has been very aggressive in being partners with many of the people in this room, many people who are part of this organization to make sure that those investments are targeted, that we are building on everything from transportation infrastructure with the ongoing investments that the state is committed to in the queue line to amazing uh, event spaces and continue to support those with the support we've done of Huntington Place to building up the technology ecosystem and the amazing, whether it's incumbent technology companies or startups that are driven by people with ideas, especially in the software space where I come from, mm -hmm. we're excited to see Detroit being named as the number one startup ecosystem for emerging companies. And, if, and adding that, yes. <clears throat> Adding to the sense that Detroit is the place for a person with an idea to come and thrive and grow and be successful. That's always been true of our city, and if it's true downtown, it can be true everywhere. Detroit is better represented in state leadership than it ever has been. Certainly, I'm a Detroiter, serving in, as Lieutenant Governor alongside Governor Gretchen Whitmer. House Speaker Joe Tate is a Detroiter. And so the, the city... <clears throat> This is a moment for the city to, to recognize that leadership in Lansing is not only responsive, but that Detroiters are literally in place. Yeah. And so when we're thinking about what our priorities are, they're the same priorities that Governor Whitmer and I have been talking about and making progress on uh, for the last four years. And I think it really starts with how are we laying the foundation for the future in the city of Detroit? The way that we've invested in public education, I believe, is laying a solid groundwork for, for transformational educational experiences. Our administration has worked with a Republican legislature for the last four years to put more money into your schools, into Detroit public schools, the schools that my children attend fourth grade in right now, than ever in the history of education in the state of Michigan. And doing so equitably, positioning young people to realize whatever dreams that they have are available to them in the economy that we are building and growing in the state of Michigan. We are gonna continue to be committed to that educational investment even going a step further by ensuring that kids have access to individualized learning experiences because a lot of kids might need a little bit more support coming out of COVID or just might need people to meet them where they are in a more aggressive way. And we're very excited to be bringing that to reality uh, here in, in, in over the next four years. When you think of other things that, um, uh, that you need to have working, you know, uh, to, to, to make the city thrive, to make Detroiters, uh, thrive, you know, education is huge on that list, but also workforce development. And you guys have been doing some work from the state level, uh, augmenting the things that we're already doing locally to, 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 to grow that. That's right. So when I think about skills training and workforce development, let's start with a goal that Governor Whitmer and I set back in 2019, something called 60 by 30. That goal means that by the year 2030, we hope to have at least 60% of Michigan's adults having either a college degree, a community college degree, a professional training or certification, a skill that they have a credential for that can translate into what they can into into work. And we have formed a program called Michigan Reconnect that was passed on a bipartisan basis that provides tuition free pathways to community college and skills training and we're excited to say that when we fully funded that program in 2020 We've already made, we started at 45% of Michiganders 
that, need, that had this kind of credential. We had to make up 15%. Well, just in two years, we made up almost 5% of that gap. We are ahead of schedule and want to continue full steam ahead to get to that credentialed state. Because when we're talking to businesses that are growing in Michigan, that are looking to come to Michigan, the number one question they ask for is can we find enough talented Michiganders? Can we find people who have the skills that we need to grow our business? Your name has been mentioned along lots of others uh, for the soon to be empty Senate seat in, uh, in, in Washington. I wonder what you think about that. I was wondering if he was going to ask you this question. <laughs> I was looking at the clock, making sure I <laughs> left enough time for you to answer that question. I mean, well, so, so where this conversation needs to start is the fact that Michigan has been amazingly served by Senator Debbie Sapnow. Like amazingly served. She has defined the fact that people across the country and the world understand that Michigan is a place where we make and grow things. Um, she has been an example and a mentor to pretty much every public servant currently serving in the state of Michigan, myself included. You know, I got to tell you, you know, we came into this conversation today because I'm excited about the next four years with Governor Gretchen Whitmer and all the work that we can do, all the things that we can deliver. The fact that we have democratic governance for the first time in my life, we have a chance to show that that makes a difference for people in a way that people can therefore think, you know what, this is something that we should continue to support because this is something that is stronger for our communities and for our economy. I didn't expect the senator to announce that she wasn't going to seek re-election. And so this is something certainly that my wife and I are, are, are thinking about because that, that has significant implications on our family. But what's important and what I am focused on is making sure that we can deliver for Michiganders right now using the tools that the voters of Michigan blessed me with in re-electing me as lieutenant governor alongside Gretchen Whitmer. And I'm going to do that to the highest and best of my ability.